Picture East Africa two million years ago. You're not the apex predator. You're lunch if you zig when you should have zagged. One branch of our cousins didn't fight that world with bigger brains or sharper spears. They met it with raw mechanics. Jaws like hydraulic presses, teeth like stone anvils, skulls braced with a bony ridge to anchor engine block muscles. While our line gambled on flexibility, Paranthropus doubled down on specialization, and it worked for over a million years. The early Pleistocene wasn't some peaceful morning on the savanna. It was a survival arena, packed with predators that turned every day into a fight for life. Massive cats prowled the grasslands, giant hyenas roamed in ruthless packs, and saber-toothed relatives stalked the shadows. Even rivers, which looked calm and inviting, doubled as deadly ambush zones. At Olduvai Gorge, scientists uncovered chilling evidence of an apex reptile that once ruled these waters, Crocodilus anthropophagus, a monstrous crocodile that didn't just hunt antelope or zebras, but may have hunted our ancestors. Fossilized bones still bear the unmistakable puncture marks of its crushing jaws. Estimates suggest this beast stretched nearly 25 feet long, the size of a three-story building, a predator so fearsome, nothing dared challenge it. In 1938, the South African paleontologist Robert Broom looked at a set of unusually thick-jawed fossils and made a bold claim. These weren't just tough versions of Australopithecus, he said. They deserved their own genus, Paranthropus. That decision sparked decades of heated debate. Were they truly unique, or just rugged cousins lumped in with the rest? Today, most experts agree Broom was right. Paranthropus was a distinct side branch of the human family tree. They were not our direct ancestors, but close relatives following their own specialized path. And that matters, because it means their strange anatomy wasn't random. It was a deliberate survival strategy, a gamble in evolution's high-stakes game. Paranthropus wasn't just one species. It was a whole experiment in survival, played out three different ways. The oldest, P. Ethiopicus, over 2.6 million years ago, bore the fearsome black skull, crowned with a massive sagittal crest like a built-in anchor for jaw muscles. Then came P. Boise, the so-called Nutcracker Man perhaps the most famous, with jaws and teeth so oversized they looked almost cartoonish, nature's ultimate grinder. And in South Africa, P. Robustus carried the same theme but in a slightly lighter frame, showing hints of flexibility and diet. Yet beneath the differences, they all lived by the same rulebook. Bite down hard, chew forever, and endure when the land turned cruel. The hallmark of Paranthropus is not a flashy trick but raw engineering. That sagittal crest, rising like a bony fin down the skull's centerline, wasn't decoration. It was an anchor, locking in massive temporalis muscles that could pull with relentless force. Add to that the flared cheekbones, the cavernous jaws, and those oversized molars coated in enamel thick as armor. Together, they formed a machine designed for endurance. Not for cracking a nut once or twice, but for grinding, chewing, and surviving day after day in a world that offered little mercy. In P. Boise, the face itself became a reinforced frame, a living power tool built to outlast famine and drought. For decades, the world knew P. Boise as Nutcracker Man, a catchy name, but a misleading one. When scientists turned to isotope chemistry and dental wear, the truth hit harder. This creature wasn't cracking nuts, it was living on grass. C4 plants, grasses, sedges, even the starchy parts buried underground, made up the bulk of its diet. Day after day, mouthful after mouthful, low-quality fuel consumed in punishing volume. And that's why those jaws mattered. They were built like a vice, grinding survival out of a harsh landscape. While our ancestors sought richer calories, fire, and flexibility, Paranthropus doubled down on brute force chewing, perfecting the art of mechanical digestion. Brains are expensive. Even today, your brain burns nearly one-fifth of every calorie you rest on. For Paranthropus, locked into a life of endless chewing, that kind of investment wasn't worth the price. Their cranial capacity stayed modest, not much beyond chimpanzees, 
while our ancestors rolled the dice on bigger brains. How? By cracking bones for marrow. By scavenging fat and protein from predator kills. Dense fuel that lit the fire of cognition. Two paths. Two wagers. Paranthropus doubled down on jaws. Homo doubled down on mines. And that gamble demanded risk, hunger, and danger. Like but it paid out in tools, to language, and the, the power to shape the world energy. itself. For decades, the rule seemed simple. Tools belong to us. Homo. Paranthropus, with its massive jaws, was painted as the brute cousin, chewing plants while our ancestors shaped stone. But new discoveries muddied that clean divide. At Nyayanga, Kenya, along the shores of Lake Victoria, archaeologists uncovered Olduin tools nearly three million years old, scattered among them, butchered hippo bones, and two paranthropus teeth. Coincidence? Maybe. But the association is hard to ignore. Did Paranthropus craft the tools, or simply use what others left behind? No one can swear it either way. Yet the find forces us to admit a bigger truth. Technology was not the monopoly of a single lineage, and it doesn't stop there. In South Africa, sites like Swartkrans and Dromolin, rich in P. robustus fossils, have yielded bone tools worn smooth in ways that match termite mound digging. Imagine it. These stocky hominins, prying open mounds to harvest insects, fat, and protein, without risking hunts for dangerous prey. Simple, practical, ingenious. The bottom line? Paranthropus likely used tools, and in some cases may have made them. Maybe not the master architects of stone, but clever survivors who knew how to turn bone and earth into opportunity. Paranthropus didn't live in isolation. Their world was crowded, with other hominins and with predators lurking in the tall grass. They shared the same rivers, the same fruiting trees, and the same open plains with Homo habilis, H. rudolfensis, and eventually H. erectus. These weren't friendly neighbors. To stumble across a coordinated band of erectus, armed with stones and wooden spears, could be far deadlier than a leopard's ambush. Yet nature doesn't always choose one winner. Just as chimpanzees and gorillas carve out overlapping territories today, so too might these early humans and their robust cousins have learned to live side by side, sometimes in friction, sometimes in uneasy peace. And beyond their own kind, the land itself pressed in with dangers. Crocodiles snapping at waterholes, saber-tooths pacing the savannas. In such a brutal arena, Paranthropus's survival strategy made sense. A body built for grinding, chewing, enduring. Reliability of flesh and bone over the gamble of cleverness. Some scientists suggest that a shadowy handshake between species left its mark deep in our blood. Around 1.4 to 3 million years ago, genital herpes may have leapt from chimpanzee ancestors into the human line, not directly, but through an unlucky bridge species. Modeling points to Paranthropus boy say as a possible carrier, though the case is far from closed. Still, the idea reminds us of a harsh truth. Ancient species didn't just compete for land or food. They also traded invisible passengers, viruses that rewired our biology, changing not just how we lived, but how we still carry the past inside our very cells. In Africa's heat, DNA dissolves, leaving silence where stories should be. But enamel, the hardest substance in the body, guards something tougher, proteins. In 2023, researchers pulled those ghostly chains from Paranthropus robustus teeth, nearly two million years old. Not DNA, but paleoproteomics, the oldest genetic-like signal ever retrieved from an African hominin. From these fragments, we glimpse sex, kinship, even population shifts. And with every test, the picture sharpens. The Paranthropus story is no longer locked in stone. Our tools have finally grown hard enough to chase them into deep time, where memory still lingers in enamel silence. Specialization is both armor and chain. For Paranthropus, massive jaws and teeth turned tough roots into steady meals, a survival engine that carried them through more than a million years. By any measure, that is triumph. Yet Africa's Pleistocene was never still. 
wetlands giving way to dry plains, forests fracturing into shifting mosaics. When your design is precise, every swing of climate tightens the vice. Meanwhile, Homo adapted, stretching farther, hunting wider, sharing food, even taming fire. Robust grinding met flexible planning. One lineage bent with change, the other stood firm until the ground itself moved beneath their feet. Picture a present where Paranthropus still lingers at the forest edge. Broad jaws chewing bark, heavy bodies moving with quiet strength. Would we build fences to keep them out? Parade them through documentaries? Or, for once, allow a piece of earth to remain untouched by our blueprints? Their fossils whisper the answer we'll never see. There was more than one way to be almost human. They chose endurance, jaws like iron, patience rooted in the soil. We chose tools, fire, restless invention. Both paths made sense in their moment, but only one could bend with time's shifting wind, and bending in the end proved stronger than biting down. Join the dig with prehistoric shadows. If this kind of evidence-first, myth-busting journey into deep time speaks to you, then hit subscribe. We take the raw finds, stone tools, fossil jaws, ancient proteins, and translate them into clear, grounded stories. No PhD required, just curiosity. And we don't hide the trail. Every claim we make is backed by sources you can check for yourself. Drop a comment with the puzzle you'd like us to crack next. Denisovan DNA, ghost lineages in Africa, or the crocodile ambushes that stalked Olduvai Gorge. Share this with a friend who still thinks Nutcracker Man spent his life on walnuts. At Prehistoric Shadows, we hold to a simple line. Human evolution isn't a ladder climbing up to us. It's a field of branching paths. Paranthropus proves that survival can mean more than clever tools. It can mean engineering the body itself to grind, to endure, to persist. We respect that strategy, even as we acknowledge where it fell short. Our own species won the flexibility lottery. Bigger brains gave us art, fire, medicine, and the burdens of higher energy needs, fragile social webs, and the vulnerabilities that come with complexity. Evolution always writes a balance sheet, and every lineage, even ours, pays its price.